Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel and the uh, Wrestling Challenge Review Series 3694, uh, a couple of weeks before WrestleMania 10. Uh, one of the last, I think the last really good top to bottom WrestleMania might have been 14 for my, for my liking anyway. So one of the last few, I know a lot of people like 17, I didn't, it wasn't for me. But my interest in the product had started to wane by that point. Anyway, uh, we open with Double, Day, <coughs> Double J and Jeff Jarrett against Mike Maldonado. Jarrett is wearing, well, a very interesting gear for the time. He is wearing kind of uh, a bandana and kind of tea and, uh, iridescent yellow slash iridescent green, uh, white, purple, orange tassels uh, crazy look he's doing the strutting gimmick I actually like Jeff Jarrett in this particular character I really enjoyed him in Memphis I don't know if he ever caught on with me on a national level in a way where I love him to death I actually love his Memphis stuff more than anything which I will eventually be doing a Memphis series here we're going to have the largest uh, wrestling audio eventually over the next several years anyway um, you know, basic stuff, headlocks and the like. Jared, of course, going to be part of a 10-man tag that gets canceled, so we're not going to hype that too terribly much here. There's really no point to cancel the match because the Shawn Michaels and uh, Razor Ramon ladder match, the first ever ladder match on pay-per-view, I think second in WWF history, Michaels and Hart, did one a couple of years before, if I remember correctly, at a house show. Uh, but anyway, Jared ends up with a back elbow there and uh, drop kick right under the chin. Of course, this is the mania where Owen Hart and Bret Hart do battle for the first time as well. One of the better WrestleMania matches of all time, at least in my opinion. Anyway, um, and I, re I actually remember having a friend who wasn't a wrestling fan over at the time on that particular day and he even he got enthralled in that match I also had a friend that my best friend at the time who was a fan and still um, to this day has a has a fond memory of that match anyway big leaping uh, DDT by Jarrett one two three get to victory they're really basic stuff nothing to really write home about in these squash matches uh, then we go to a special report. The special report basically shows, uh, which Lord Alfred Hayes is part of. I miss Lord Alfred so much. Uh, really a good, a, just a good guy, an interesting talent. Of course, such an integral part of that first, I guess, 10 years of the expansion, 84 to 94 probably. Anyway, they go back to uh, Superstars from earlier in that week. I don't think that Superstars is available anywhere online. But anyway, uh, Bret Hart and Adam Baum are... Doing battle, Brett has a very basic match with him. They don't show the whole match, show it in clip form. They show Owen kind of waiting at ringside or in the aisleway, kind of watching over. Of course, Owen and Brett would have a feud that runs about two years, 93 to 90, or 94, 95, so maybe a year and a half. But um, pretty big deal there. Probably the best run that Owen ever had. I actually... Personally, I'm an Owen Hart fan more than a Bret Hart fan. I thought Owen could have been the champion more than Bret. That was my personal opinion. Obviously, no one agreed because it didn't happen. But uh, uh, Russian leg sweep on Bomb. And, and again, Owen just kind of very cockily hit, hanging out back there. Uh, Bret does his general, you know, Russian leg sweep, goes for the elbow, actually misses the elbow drop, which for the time, or knee drop actually, from the second rope, and so time is a big thing. Uh, Paul Bearer plays kind of the, I mean, he's doing a babyface interview segment in 94. Of course, The Undertaker, a babyface by 1994, has been since 92, right after WrestleMania 8. And he kind of plays that devil's advocate. Why did Owen do this? Of course, Owen mentions always being the underdog in the family, not being respected, not being loved, not being cared about. Uh, mentions kicking the leg out of the leg of Bret Hart. Of course, I was at Royal Rumble 94, so... Always reenacted that promo from time to time. And Owen promises victory at uh, Mania 10. Earthquake, who I'd forgotten was here, although I do remember the uh, the match 
with Adam Bomb that runs about less than two minutes, maybe less than 90 seconds at WrestleMania 10. Um, faces off against Iron Mike Sharp here. Mike Sharp, of course, running a school in New Jersey. Most notable graduate from that, I believe, is Nova, a.k.a. Mike Bucci, who went on to ECW fame and then, of course, did the uh, talent evaluations for a couple of years. Uh, Sharp tries some power moves, doesn't really get too far. Mike puts him on the second rope on the inside, says he's going to punch him, lets him go. Power slam, leg drop, and then the earthquake splash. Quake, obviously, getting a victory in that one-sided match. Then we go to the face-to-face -face format of things. Uh... That ultimately had replaced the event center by this time. Always going to be partial to the event center because that's where I came from in terms of as a fan. Uh, interviews with Macho Man hyping Slim Jims and um, Ico Pro, which was their supposedly anti-steroid kind of system. Uh, Sam Lane is the commentator alongside Gorilla Monsoon for this. They're hyping pretty aggressively Friday through Sunday. 18th through the 20th, uh, the WrestleMania Fan Fest, this is access, uh, something they were doing quite a bit with. Owen Hart, once again, defending his right to be, to take Brett out once and for all. Brett basically says he wanted, the, he never wanted this, it's Owen that wanted it, and Brett's going to have to do what he has to do now that uh, Owen demanded a match that he didn't want. Of course, Brett having to wrestle twice that day, he's going to face the winner of the Yokozuna Lex Luger match, thank goodness it wasn't Luger, because I remember the Brett Luger matches from oh ninety three, about a year and a half year before this, and they were not good. So uh, as weird as it sounds, Yoko being in that position, a better option. Head shrinkers against Scott Taylor, otherwise known as Scotty Too Hotty, and Tony Roy, a New England independent uh, standout, Massachusetts, Connecticut, main area. Um, who, who was trained by Killer Kowalski, and we see uh, Nikolai Volkov in a business suit that the, or a uh, bad suit jacket anyway. Uh, head shrinkers, uh, Samu and Fatu here. Uh, originally, according to the recent WWF uh, or WWE Icon special, Yokozuna was going to be one of the head shrinkers, but got a leg infection, and that was taken away from him. Of course, it actually worked out better for his career. Of course, by this point, I believe the head shrinkers are baby faces. If they're not baby faces, he actually, yeah, they are, because they're on the I think they're on the baby face team at the WrestleMania 10. If not, they turn by summer because uh, they dropped the tag team championships to Diesel and Shawn Michaels, who were heels by that, or at that point. Uh, in the summer, and I think I was at a show the same week that that title switch took place. Punch kick, um, and then kind of a, a, a top up on uh, Roy, or on Taylor rather. Uh, tag off, really simple maneuvers, double team, and the head drinker's really good at double team. Double clothesline, double punches, nothing really to write home about specifically, but at the same time, uh, Certainly a rather aggressive run, and again, top rope, splash from the head shrinkers, one, two, three, and away they go. They're kind of making making fun a little bit of uh, um, Nikolai Volkov at ringside. Of course, Volkov, a former tag team champion, being in this role. Rather long uh, WrestleMania 10 report series. They kind of go several minutes, but probably about five or six minutes. Uh, superstars earlier in the week, uh, the A show, so to speak, at the time, maybe, well, maybe the B show, because prime time would be considered the A show, uh, but Michaels is sitting atop the ladder, says he's gonna, he climbs the ladder, says he's gonna sit atop, and then stand atop the ladder as the guy who wins, um, Razor Ramon fights back and basically says that the Intercontinental Champion, uh, Championship is his, he is the champion of note, he is the champion that matters, and that is that. Um, they do a almost five-minute uh, Yokozuna piece here um, after a couple more squash matches, basically hyping Yoko as 
one of the most dominant champions of all time. Why you drop him to uh, Hulk Hogan as part of WrestleMania 10? I do not know. I, like I or uh, WrestleMania, no, they had not done. They had done that at nine. Uh, getting my years mixed up here. Mark Thomas and the Black Phantom against Billy and Bart Gunn. Such a weird thing. Billy Gunn still around uh, almost 30 years later at this point. Um, he looks so different, obviously. Um, Billy Gunn at this point had so much potential. Never really hit as a singles guy, but a great tag team guy. And I think Billy and Bart Gunn could have gone further as a tag team. I know they were tag team champions a couple of times, but at this, looking back, maybe it's a racism, but I think they could have done more as a team. Big hip tosses by Billy and kind of getting an advantage there. Good double teams by the Guns. Short cuts, uh, cutoffs, and, and Billy stays in the ring the majority of the time. Actually pulls a man by his hair backwards and uh, sends him back pretty hard onto the canvas. Uh, big snap suplex, almost dynamite kid style by, or hanging super, uh, hanging style by uh, Bart Gunn. Bart, the more powerful. Billy kind of the, the speedier of the bunch at that time. Interesting to say he did slow down as years went by. Anyway, series of drops, get, uh, series of uh, leg drops and elbow drops and basic stuff by Bart Gun Gun, certainly uh, not wanting to waste any energy in there. Certainly not wanting to get in a situation where he can't make a recovery of some sort. Anyway, tags off to Billy. Billy comes back in and uh, does what he does. Really basic stuff there, but a top rope sidewinder type maneuver gets a victory for the Guns. Uh, and obviously they're back on their winning ways. Uh, another WrestleMania 10 preview is up next, and uh, like I said, that uh, video package for Yokozuna runs about four or five minutes. Really hyping him as a, as a decent guy there. Uh, Sparky Plug, Thurman Sparky Plug, a.k.a. Bob Holly. Um, of course, at this point, Plug, a.k.a. Holly, doing his uh, race car gimmick, checkered flag pants and the whole deal. Um, and I remember going to house shows at the time and, and kids, large quantities of them, chanting woof woof sparky at a baby face. Not that they're not going to say I didn't join in, but it was just hilarious at the time. Anyway, um, so side headlock takeover, real basic stuff. Bert Santeno, a guy that I, I worked with in 97, 98 on the New England independent scene. Really good guy who just never got his uh, due. Might have done better if there was a smaller territory at the time. But uh, obviously got several, I'd, I'd say at least half a dozen, if not a dozen, uh, enhancement talent matches over the years at this time period. And uh, I had many good stories about that. Gets tangled up in the ropes on a hip toss, though, so a little bit of misguidedness. Holly only having a couple years under his belt at this time. Not that that's an excuse, but at the same time, going from working independence and some Smoky Mountain stuff to national television, international television, has to be a lot of pressure. Um, you know, Irish whip by uh, Sparky, and the big backdrop doesn't get all he wants on it. Goes to the top rope. And gets the diving knee drop type maneuver after a couple of body slams. Another basic move gets a victory there. Uh, once again, they hype WrestleMania to close out the show, run down the card. Shawn Michaels says he's going to stand atop and use the ladder in every possible way. Razor Ramon says he's going to do the same. Odd that the main hype for WrestleMania a couple weeks out is more the Intercontinental title match, which ends up being the better match anyway. That's not the point. Just weird that that's where they end up going with it. But anyhow, uh, that will close us for today. We'll be back with more right after this.